So we're starting off 2020 with my favourite bike of 2019, the Husqvarna Vitpilen 701. Yeah, I make decisions to glow. Ridiculous flow, potential to glow. You know, I, I just do that. Consolidate my regions, line it up, put them together. Anyone that ever let me down, forget them forever. My memory's bad. Remember me, though? My memory's gone. My memory, it limits me home. No tree huggers, cause all the lumber's gone. It's a gift knocking on wood. Pass through the hood when it's good and they chopping up wood. Breaking up stems till in my brim. With a limp like a pimp, though I'm shaped like a wimp. They put no fear in him, it's just me and the end of my time. Line. Flow like a fine wine, smelling like fine pine. Yeah, is this the end or just the beginning? Am I losing the winning? Is this reality? So a couple of months ago, I was trying to get hold of the Spark Pillin 701 from Husqvarna. Basically, we'd done a static review at the 2018 Motorcycle Live. The bike looks wicked, and I thought you guys would be really interested in it as well. Now, at that time, Husqvarna actually came back and said, you can also have the Vitpillen 701 and race it at the Bike Shed Festival. I thought, hey, I'll give that a go. Um, actually, at the time, I wasn't that interested in the Vitpillen um, just because it was, a, it was a bit older and I thought the Spark Pillen would be more interested. Well, how wrong was I? I mean, seriously, in the time that we've had it, me and that Vitpillen 701 have become absolute best friends. So basically I picked the bike up from London, rode right through the town centre uh, where we were having our trade launch for 2020, um, that was in October, and then the following day went to the Bike Shed Festival and actually got some pretty good results there too. Um, now in the time that we've had it up here in the Lake District, you know, we, we've just, I've just absolutely fell in, the love, in love with the bike. It is just awesome. And it has got some niggles and it has got some uh, downsides which I'll come on to later in the review, but, that being said, I'm still going to hang my hat on that that was the best bike, in my opinion, that I rode in 2019. That's really saying something because I rode some wicked bikes last year. Um, but the Vitpillen 701 was my favourite. Firstly, despite its really sharp looks, and the Vitpillen does look fantastic, that aside for a second, this is a real rider's bike. I mean, you know, it's testament to the bike that basically, you know, having ridden it for like 20 minutes, the following day I'm at a track and within 20 minutes of, of, of riding on the track I'm lapping like two seconds uh, slower than a guy who's rode at the, the, the TT. You know, that's incredible. Um, you know, I've not got a lot of track experience and, uh, and so on, but the bike is so immediately confidence inspiring. It's a real rider's bike. The bike's given me the track bug too, so with a bit of practice, if I get the chance to do the same thing and ride again at Lydon Hill on it, um, I'm going sub 50 uh, second lap times, definitely, um, because honestly the bike was so much more capable than what I did with it. Um, it's just fantastic. Pretty much everything you chuck at the Vitpillen 701, it just handles it. And I would say it's about the perfect short track bike. Obviously there's faster bikes out there. This is a single cylinder machine. It's got 75 horsepower. It's about half the power of my regular bike. But don't let that deceive you. This is a real rider's bike. And I think a lot of people would do really well to like give it some notice. In my opinion, there's a lot of guys out there riding bikes that are probably a bit too fast for them. Get a Vitpillen 701, learn to ride the absolute wheels off it. And you'll honestly, you'll really enjoy yourself. Now the engine is just fantastic. Now, it's the tried and tested KTM 690 single cylinder lump. Um, yeah, it's, you know, below 3,000 revs, it's chuggy as a bag of spanners, basically. But once you're above that, and it's not hard to get above that, um, it's really smooth, it's really punchy. It's got loads of torque on it, this, this bike, and it's really fast as well. If you ride it properly, this is a seriously, seriously quick bike. The fact that this engine only produces 75 horsepower is quite deceiving, actually. It's a seriously quick motor. I mean, in the motorcycle.com review, they actually recorded it at 3.6 seconds to zero to 60, and just over 12 seconds for a quarter mile sprint. That's a fast bike, and in the right hands, this is a seriously quick machine. And of course, with a more powerful bike and a bigger engine, yes, you are gonna be faster, and you're gonna be faster on the long straights, but in the short twisties, combining that single cylinder punch that it's got 
with the fact that it's a super lightweight bike. I mean, it's 157 kilos dry, this bike. You know, that's, that's a really light bike. There's not that many bikes out there that weigh that kind of lightweight. It's super lightweight. So you combine that, um, that punch and that power with that super lightweight and you've got a really, really quick and light and agile real riders bike. It's also a massive wheelie machine. I did pull a few as well. Um, you know, because it's got that instant whack, it's got that instant torque. You know, first gear, 15 mile an hour, you crack that throttle and you're in the air. Second gear, no problems. Just give it a bit of a clutch and it'll come up, no problems. It's a real, real wheelie machine. Probably the easiest bike I've wheelied so far. Obviously, in order to wheelie, you do need to turn the traction control off. So there's a little button on the dash that you have to basically press when you're stationary. Press and hold it, a little light will come up and then you're good to go basically. You can't wheelie without that and it's quite funny because at the, at the end of the race at the Bike Shed Festival I'd left the traction control on um, and I tried to pull a wheelie and it was the most pathetic little thing I've ever done. Um, but yeah, so turn the traction control off and you're good to go. Our bike was fitted with the uh, Akropovich can. Um, I think it looks really good. I love the look of the, the can. I think it's a real addition. I, th I don't think it's that loud actually, so you are fine if you're going to do track days or whatever, you're definitely going to come under the decibel reading. There's not that much sound addition I wouldn't have thought, so it doesn't sound like amazing amazing, but it does pop and bang on the overrun which is quite nice. Um, you know, but it's a, yeah, it's a nice little addition. The handling on the Vip Pillen is fantastic. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. It's so agile. It's so eager to turn, really stable. The position, the cafe racer position, and while it's a cafe racer, people obviously look at the bike and think, oh God, it's all about the looks, and you know, um, it's all about that kind of styling rather than being a rider's bike. This handles really, really well. In terms of the positioning, I think it's about perfect. It's kind of um, like a cross between uh, a full-on sports bike. It's not as aggressive as my one, um, but it is a cafe racer. Um, sort of bent over which is nice and engaging but actually on longer rides I've not found the positioning uncomfortable at all it's it's really really about perfect for me uh, and I'm five foot ten so the bikes also fitted with WP suspension so it's a really premium suspension setup I wouldn't have said it's overly hard it's actually feels quite uh, soft and compliant it really uh, absorbs the bumps. We've got quite bumpy roads here in the Lake District and on those short twisties, bumpies, it, it, it handles them really, really well um, and just soaks up the bumps. But at the same time, you know, as I kind of found out on track, it's really eager and, it's, and it, 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 you know, it combines to make the bike a really um, premium setup. And I, that's what I would say about the suspension and the chassis on the Vip Pillen. It's just, the, the whole bike just feels really, really premium and the suspension and the chassis are no different. Brakes actually work really fantastically as well. Initially when I saw the bike and, and I kind of forgot in my head it was a single disc brake and I'm always a bit like unsure about single discs. I've, rode and I've, I've ridden quite a few, uh, certainly heavier bikes with single discs and I've always found them a bit weak and therefore I kind of approach the bike with the same, same deal. But you have to remember they're you know, big Brembo calipers and the bike is only weighing 157 kilos dry. It's ample power basically and works really, really well. Now the tires that it's got are the Bridgestone BT023s, which actually are a nice match for the bike. Um, again, looking at Bridgestone, I had them on my Jixxer, um, but the BT016s, and I thought they were absolute pants. They were fine in the dry and the warm, but in the cold and the wet, they were absolutely rubbish. So I was kind of a little bit apprehensive about that. But these ones are seemingly really good. Um, I rode in the wet. I, I'm not sure they're the best wet tire. I'm not sure they're the best cold tire, but in the dry and the warm, they're really, really good, really sticky, perfect for sort of, you know, light track days and fast road riding and stuff like that. They're a good overall tire. On the looks front, I absolutely love the way the Vip Pillen 701 looks. For me, it's about the best cafe racer that you can currently buy new from production. Really sharp, really careful lines. I just love the, the I love the cafe racer look anyway, but I think the Vip Pillen 701 brings something different to the table. 
and for me it's the best looking cafe racer style bike on the market today. And actually the 2020 model um, just kind of takes this up an extra notch. They've got a really nice blue model with um, sort of gloss paint, they've put spoke wheels on it. Again, you know, it's just lifted the notch higher again. I really, really like the way this bike looks. Finally, I'm a massive fan of the ergonomics on this bike. For me, it just, everything about the bike is just confidence inspiring. It fits me, you know, I'm five foot 10. I, I found the positioning like perfect, so comfortable, um, so easy to kind of ride fast, ride relaxed. It's just fantastic. I'm a real fan of the ergonomics of the bike. So at Knox, obviously we use all the gear that we make uh, for these reviews and this one was no different. And you know, the Vitpillen 701 styling really works well with the aesthetic that some of our products give. And I think the picture's pretty, turned out pretty well too. So on this test, I've been using items from the Knox layering system, including the Urban Pro shirt, the Ford leather jacket, uh, quilted jacket as well actually, Richmond Mark II jeans, covert gloves, um, and I think that's it. Um, I'm going to put all of the links in the description so you can check out there. So please go and check them out and please support what we're doing too. So the price of the Vitpillen 701 is £8,999 in the UK. Now uh, Husqvarna have put some deals available on the 2019 models uh, which are currently available at £6,999 which makes the bike really competitive. I mean, you know, that's XSR. Uh, 700 uh, MT07 type of price and I think at that price it's an absolute no-brainer this is the one to go for so as I mentioned before and in the interest of this not looking like a hundred percent an advert for this bike there are a couple of niggles and I'm just gonna go into them now the first one being the fuel gauge and the sort of distance to empty thing it just doesn't work and I think you know we've tested quite a few KTM group um, bikes over the last year and actually I found none of their fuel gauges work properly they're dead inconsistent they're up down you know sometimes you've got a full tank and you've got like 100 miles to empty then uh, other times you've got like a quarter tank and it says you've got 300 miles to empty um, basically they just they just don't work so I think probably what's best to do is sort of um, start the trip when you fill it up and know that you're getting about 100 to 120 miles a tank out of this bike, which is you know what most people do previous to them having fuel gauges. But this one doesn't work very well. The second downside is there's quite a lot of vibrations coming through the handlebars, particularly on the throttle side um, of the handlebar. Now, I don't know um, whether this was just my bike or whether it was, uh, you know, is common throughout the, the, the Vitpillum ones. Perhaps you can comment in the description if you own this bike um, and let us know. Because uh, I, actually I didn't get it on the Svartpillum at all. Um, so I, I, I just wondered whether it was something, you know, on this particular bike. But there was quite a lot of high frequency sort of vibrations coming through that can make your hand numb. I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but it is a little bit annoying, um, particularly if you're on a longer ride. Third downside, and this is kind of due to the nature of the bike and the styling, it's not really a type of bike that you're gonna do uh, like pillion riding with. Yeah, you can stick someone on for 100 meters or so, but much past that, it's no good for that. Um, you've not got a huge amount of space for like uh, sticking luggage on and all that kind of stuff. This is more orientated towards like blasts, you know, Sunday blasts, or if you just do shorter sort of uh, ride outs and stuff like that you know this is probably not orientated you know sticking everything in the kitchen sink on it because there just isn't the space and you ain't really going to get a pillion on it too. The other thing is that the seat is really hard and while it's quite wide and therefore you sort of like spread your weight over that width you can't get around the fact that the seat is quite hard and that does make it uncomfortable after quite a period of time. So finally, I really appreciate that the 701 is a really premium product. Um, and I don't really have a problem with it at £8,999. Um, in fact, at 7,000 quid, which is what they're, they're offering the 2019 model at, I think they've got a hands down class winner. I really, really do. But the problem is at 9,000 quid, it's not that the 
problem is with the price and the bikes, I think it's, a, it's still a great package at that. I think it's the other things that start to come in your mind at that price level. For example, Kawasaki's new Z900, BMW's F900R, you've got the KTM 8, uh, 790 Duke, and for another 1400 quid, you've got the 890 Duke R, which is just gonna be an awesome machine. Um, so it's not the fact that, it's, oh, it's not the idea that I think the bike's expensive for what it is. I just think at that price level, there are gonna be other things that come in people's mind that kind of pull them away from buying the Vip Pillen 701. And I think that's a real shame because I think the bike is absolutely mint and really shouldn't be ignored. I think, yeah, you know, there's a lot more people um, who should be owning this bike. So I think it's an absolute winner. So other than that, basically we're cooking on gas. And you know, if you haven't told already, I'm super smitten with the bike. I absolutely love it and have absolutely no uh, qualms in recommending it to anybody. It's, you know, it was my favorite bike for 2019, no problems. However, just a final thought. Now, if I was working in Husqvarna design department, I'd right now, I'd be leaning pretty heavily on my KTM counterparts and saying, do you think there's a chance that we can use the 790 Duke engine and put it in the Vip Pillen? Okay, we'd need to add another front brake disc, but other than that, if that actually happened, you'd have a XSR 900 beta, you'd have an NTO 9 beta, you'd have a KTM uh, 790 Duke beta. I, it, it would just be a phenomenal bike. So if you're listening KTM, please, and Husqvarna, please do that. So that wraps up our review of the Vip Pillen 701. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please let us know what you think in the comments. Be really interested to hear what you think about this bike and also what we're doing. Please subscribe to the channel too if you're not already and we'll see you next time. You get that if you need to sit back and crack the six pack. I should be in the gym doing sit ups trying to get the six pack. But forget that, where the click at? Where the bras and the cash and the whips at? Put a bit back, with a bop, with a bit, bit, a bit back. <laughs> I just did that. Trying to focus on my get back, my get up, my re up, my rematch. A patch of seeds and Apache debris passing through. Indian Springs in Las Vegas, my Jeep, bumper Nirvana in Nevada, my favorite.